Good day to everyone, how are you doing guys? During that last double XP weekend I managed to level up my paladin to almost 100 level. I mainly did power gaming on ancient scarabs in Ankrahun. I want to share with you how to do small power leveling on paladin around level 70. Get ready for real waste. All the clips except one are from double XP weekend so high numbers included but I will recalculate it from 300 to base 150 percent on green stamina so you could have an idea how much experience you could get on usual day leave a like subscribe to the channel and of course comment down below what do you think about doing power, power leveling i wonder if you do you guys prefer this type of playstyle let me know and of course let's start first counting spot is going to be just like i mentioned in the intro mother scarab's lair in ankrah moon that place may be considered more of a mage spawn, but this is such a great place for Paladin as well. It is located in between Ankrahmun and Darashia. I guess it's closer to Darashia, but I have always been running back to Ankrahmun for supplies. I don't like that mountain pass. Anyway, Ancient Scarabs. This is the target for this spot and before you start hunting them, I suggest going to Portop to start Power and Fur task. The Ancient Scarab boss is quite valuable, not to mention the points. Aside from scarabs, there are also bone beasts in quite significant amount, so don't forget to test to take this task as well. When it comes to weapon and ammunition, I was using modified crossbow with drill bolts. On this level you can also start using assassin stars. Even though required level is 80 and you get minus 1 attack per 1 level, so overall we have similar stats to drill bolts and we can use shield for additional defensive. When you finally choose your weapon and get to the spawn, start clearing each room and be careful not to lose more than 3 to 4 ancients. If you get surrounded, this may end up terrible. Don't forget that you can always throw some fire fields on the ground to help yourself. They do not run on fire. By the way, if you haven't watched my last video, I've showed how to hunt ancient scarabs one by one using fire fields. Highly suggest checking this out. So, try to run away from them and throw great fireball runes and use Mass Sun. Take turns on them. Mass Sun, GFB, Mass Sun. If you want to, you can invite someone to hunt in duo with you. It should greatly increase the experience. About the experience. It's really great here, around 500k per hour. But sadly, with that playstyle, comes real waste. You will be wasting a lot here. Around 300 strong mana potions lasted me for 20 to 25 minutes and during that time I used around 200 great fireball runes. A lot of waste, but on the other hand, ancient scarabs drop quite valuable items. Spring sprout roads, scarab amulets, scarab shields and a lot of gold coins. So it will cover some of the waste. Let's go to the next one, where creatures in Edron. I have showed you where creatures spawn in Greenvale in my last video. Link upper right corner. This time I would like to share with you a different spawn. It is located south from Edron's depot. It is going to be the same tactic as in Greenvale spawn, so prepare firewalls. Let me present you all the monsters we are going to face there. Mainly fire were foxes, but there are also were badgers, were boars, and were bears. Right after you go inside that hall, I suggest throwing firewalls on the north and south. That way we are protecting ourselves from all the monsters coming for us. This room is going to be our main hunting place. The most fragile part of the hunting here is at the beginning when you don't set all the firefields. But later on it's super easy. Just lure monsters one by one and run with, with them. If you get attacked by two or more, then just throw GFBs and use Mass Sun. Where foxes are the easiest to kill because they keep the distance so you don't have to do anything. Although, be careful because just like where badgers, they cast death beams and these could be really dangerous when you get hit from more than two monsters. I suggest equipping b the butterfly ring to protect yourself from death damage and get some physical mitigation as well. Compared to ancients, Scarabs, you should not be wasting that much, it is definitely more chilling spawn. During full moon they will drop moonlight crystals, so this could be another argument to hunt here. 
experience is slightly worse than in Ankrak Moon. I was able to get around 450k per hour. For supplies, take around 150 strong mana potions and the same amount of great fireball runes. For the ammunition, take around 500 drill bolts or more if you want. The amount of ammunition you're going to take with you will dictate how long your hunt will last. Fairies Ice Portal. This place requires quests to get access here. It's called Troubled Animals Quest. There is a lot of running here, but trust me, this is going to be beneficial in the long run. When you finish that quest, go and grab one small sapphire and head to a city of your choice to get past the portal. I chose Venor. I really like this city, so many memories. By the way, I know that this that clip which I'm showing you right now is from level 100 character and you're not going to have the same gear but beside this everything else will look the same just adapt the playstyle to your level and equipment so we are mainly going to hunt Nymph, Faun, Pixie, Puka and Swan Maiden to help yourself throw firewalls on the ground especially when fighting against Nymphs these could be really dangerous, they deal up to 350 physical damage and 100 earth damage. Happily for us, they are weak to physical damage, 10% and pixie, 5%. Try not to fight two nymphs at the same time if this is possible, or keep the distance. Pixies, on the other hand, are quite easy to fight, they keep the distance by themselves. So, also be careful and watch for those holes in the ground because you may end up surrounded in the dark cave. I was hunting mainly near the water. The experience here is really nice, around 400k per hour on level 70. You should be getting some nice profit as well. This monster drops items like wooden spellbook, boots of haste and butterfly ring, plus many more valuable items. Let's move on to the last spot in this episode, Oramont Minotaurs. I think everyone knows about that place. You don't need any access to get here, just go to Thais and then use the boat to swim to Oramont. Get yourself some firewall because they are going to be really helpful. When you first come here, I suggest taking north stairs and when you go down, throw firebomb on yourself. Blood beasts do not run through fire. There are three types of Minotaurs and the blood beast, which you are going to hunt here. Hunters and priests keep the distance, so you just have to shoot them. You may find Mino Hunters quite problematic because they run on low health and they are really fast with haste. Do not run too far because you can really easily get surrounded. When it comes to Blood Beasts, just use firewalls if you need. And for warriors, run away and keep the distance. Use your Eteral Spear for a single target. Really nice about that place is you can start collecting Rathlon points by collecting the roots. Those points will be used to get access to different Oramon hunting grounds, like Glute Bandits for instance. For every 5 roots you get 1 point, so I suggest checking Rathlon quest on the wiki for more information. I will leave a link to the wiki in the description. About the experience, you'll be getting here around 450 to 500k per hour. This place is great for duo, I was hunting with a druid. Experience was absolutely higher than doing solo. I highly recommend trying that. And that was the last spot in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I have recorded many more clips which will cover level 90 and plus episodes. So stay tuned and see you in the next one. Cheers guys, bye bye.